it's me, Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm here today to test out a bunch of different microwave mug recipes. Now, I did not want this video to be strictly microwave mug cakes, although microwave mug cakes are amazing. I kind of wanted to branch out and try some like breakfast items, lunch slash dinner items, and of course, desserts because desserts are the best meal of the entire day. I found all these recipes on the wonderful world of Pinterest, and I will link all the original recipes as well as the content creators in the description below so I can credit them and just have them for you if you want to check them out and try them for yourself. If you have any other questions or concerns after watching this video, just ask them in the comments below and I will try very hard to get back to you as soon as possible. And without further ado, let's just get right into this video. To start, we're gonna be making this blueberry French toast. You wanna crack one egg into a mug. To the egg, you wanna add in a fourth of a cup of milk, and you also want to add a dash of cinnamon, along with a little dash of maple syrup. I did probably about a teaspoon. Then you just wanna mix that all up and set it to the side. Next you want to take two pieces of bread, it doesn't matter what kind, use your favorite kind of bread. I am using this multi-grain wheat bread and you just want to slice it up into little cubes. Take your cubed slices of bread, place it inside of your wet ingredients and press it down. You want to saturate the bread so all the bread is completely immersed in the wet ingredients. Lastly, you wanna take a handful of blueberries and you wanna just place them on the top. I took some of my blueberries and pressed them down so it would get throughout the entire French toast, not just the top. But yes, just take a handful of blueberries and place them all over your French toast bake. Microwave this on high for two minutes and voila, you have your very own instant blueberry French toast. I topped mine with a slab of butter and added another little drizzle of maple syrup. And I have to say, I am super, super impressed with how this recipe came out. It was very, very delicious. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. It tasted exactly like French toast that you would make at home or get at the restaurant. It was so easy to make, so incredibly fast and really, really decadent. I had my sweet, now I need my salty. I found this really easy, savory egg and cheese omelet online that you can make in the microwave, so I decided to give it a go. You just wanna start with two cracked eggs in a mug. Then you just wanna take whatever diced up vegetables or cooked meat that you want. I went with some diced up onions and some cut up scallions. Then I took a handful of cheese, placed it right on the top, and then I mixed it up. You can always add any seasonings to this, but I thought mine had enough flavor with the onions and enough salt from the cheese. microwave this on high for two minutes. The recipe actually only called for one minute, but I found that my eggs were still very runny after only a minute, so I microwaved it again for another minute, and this is what my final product looks like. I was very, very skeptical about this one at first because, I don't know, just eggs in a microwave, it just doesn't seem like something that would work out, but it does. It really works out. These eggs were so fluffy, probably some of the fluffiest eggs I've ever made in my entire life. They were delicious. The flavor was incredible, and again, just so easy and so fast. I give this one two thumbs way up high. Now for the pepperoni and cheese pizza recipe. Start off with your dry ingredients to make your dough. You're going to need four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder, a sixteenth of a teaspoon of baking soda, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Mix that all together and then get ready for your wet ingredients. For the 
the ingredients, you're going to need three tablespoons of whole milk as well as one tablespoon of olive oil. Mix that all up until you get a dough-like batter for your pizza. The final two steps is just to take a scoop of pizza sauce, place it on top of your batter and spread it out until you get a nice even layer and then top with whatever you want. There's Jack's trying to sneak a little taste of my pizza. I top mine with a handful of mozzarella cheese and I also top mine with some mini pepperoni slices. Microwave on high for one and a half minutes and that's pretty much all there is to it. This definitely, definitely represented pizza. It was really good. I'm just not sure if I would make this one again. It's definitely something that you could make in a pinch if you want pizza really, really fast. But I personally just like holding my pizza in my hand and eating it as like a handheld food. Again, very flavorful, very good. Just not something I would probably make again. Time for my favorite recipe of this video. This recipe, let me tell you a little something about this recipe. It is everything, every single thing. All you need is a cup of water, place it into a mug, then take half a cup of whatever kind of pasta you wanna use, put a little a dash of salt, and then microwave it for eight minutes, stopping at five minutes, mixing it up, and then microwaving again for another three to four minutes. This recipe did not call for milk, but I like mine to be a little creamier, so I added just a little splash of milk and then half of a cup of cheddar cheese. Then you just wanna take a spoon and mix it all together. If your cheese is not melting like mine here, you can just throw it back in the microwave for another minute and the cheese should come out very very melty and very ooey gooey. To add just a little more flavor into my macaroni and cheese, I added some ground black pepper, some garlic powder, and some paprika. I mixed it up and best instant mac and cheese of my life. I mean, I don't think I need to say this again. I'm pretty sure you're getting the gist of how I feel at this point, but I'll say it anyways. This mac and cheese was phenomenal. It was so good. It came out a thousand times better than I thought it was going to come out. If you are a mac and cheese lover like myself, definitely give this one a go. I definitely think that you guys should try this one out. I personally do not think that you would be disappointed at all. Chocolate chip cookie time. Now I'm going to throw out a little disclaimer before you guys watch this clip. I did not like this recipe at all and I'm just now realizing the reason for that is probably because I messed this recipe up. So I apologize. Please do not take this clip too seriously. I will link the actual recipe in the description below. I did a lot of teaspoons where I was supposed to do tablespoons for some of the ingredients. So that is probably why I didn't really like it that much. If you want the actual recipe, it is one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of granulated white sugar, one tablespoon of firmly packed dark brown sugar, three drops of vanilla extract, a small pinch of kosher salt, one egg yolk, and a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour. Mix that together and then add in two heaping tablespoons of semi-sweet chocolate chips.
Microwave on high for about 40 to 50 seconds and you have your very own personal chocolate chip cookie. Now, even though I messed this recipe up pretty bad, it still wasn't terrible, terrible. It did represent a chocolate chip cookie. It was just more of a chocolate chip cake cookie rather than a warm, fresh out of the oven, crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside chocolate chip cookie. Now, those are my favorite. Even if I was to make this again, I bet this would taste a little better. I just personally like the fresh out of the oven homemade chocolate chip cookies more so I think I'm probably just going to stick to that. And last, but definitely, definitely not least, the Snickerdoodle Mug Cake. This recipe might actually give the mac and cheese recipe a run for its money. It was that good. All you're going to need is a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix that all together and then set it to the side. Now you want to work with the wet ingredients. Start off with a fourth of a cup of milk at room temperature. Add it in to two tablespoons of slightly melted butter and then take half of a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and mix it all together. Once it's mixed pretty thoroughly, you want to take your dry ingredients, add it into your wet ingredients and mix until you have a cake-like batter. One of the most important elements of making snickerdoodle anything is having that cinnamon sugar layer. So you want to add a tablespoon of sugar with a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon, mix it up, and very quickly, shout out and brownie points to anybody who found the hidden Mickey in this bowl. If you did, let me know in the comments below. So once you've mixed your cinnamon with your sugar, you just want to take a mug and start layering your batter with your cinnamon sugar. So I did a layer of cake batter, then I took a sprinkle of cinnamon sugar, I did another layer of cake batter, another sprinkle of cinnamon sugar, a final layer of batter, and a final sprinkle of the cinnamon and sugar mixture. Microwave on high for one and a half minutes and you have your very own snickerdoodle cake. This is the perfect, perfect portion size. I'm not saying that this is healthy at all and this is like a good healthy portion. I'm just saying it's a pretty decent size for one person. This one tasted so good. Wait till you see this next clip and get to see what the actual cake looks like. It looks like a cake fresh out of the oven and you really made it in under five minutes. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for watching. It really, really means a lot to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. If you decide to try any of these recipes out, please send me pictures on Instagram or on Twitter. I would love to see your recreations. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.